positions. And, Teddy, if you're expecting finesse and technique, tonight's not the night for that. But I think we're going to have a ton of action. Actually, it is a night for technique and finesse as far as Marcelo goes. I think in the main event, you're right. Those guys are going to be there. They're going to grind it out a little bit. Although I think the main event fighter, the hometown kid, Gavronsky, is going to have to box. Johnson, you're right about him. He's going to come forward. But tonight, I think Marcelo's going to show you technique. He's going to box. He's going to show you legs. He's going to show you what you're seeing right now. An outside game, and he better show that because in front of him, Hovanesian is a sick and destroy guy for the most part. He's going to come forward, try to break you down. And look, Marcelo can say all he wants about how he lost his only fight the last time he was on our air, about not listening to his corner. But the truth be spoken, he was just broken down by the relentless pressure and toughness of Nagaya. He has to make sure that doesn't happen tonight. And Hobanesian is cut from the same cloth. He was talking about wanting to be just like Vic Darchinian, a guy who goes after his prey, who wants to break you down and finish you before the final bell. And for Micello, it was getting back to basics, working on what's worked for him in the past, staying on the outside and trying to outbox his opponent. Mazzello wins two ways. With the pressure of Hobanesian, just like he had that pressure from Nagaya, he's got to keep more balance. He's got to pick his spots, use his legs, like I said, like he's doing, control range. And maybe it wouldn't hurt if he could send the punch in that stuns or slows down Hobonesian to keep that pressure a little bit under control. He rooms with Jordanis Ugas out in North Bergen, New Jersey, visits his family in New York over the weekend, his wife Deborah and his four-year-old son Yalim. So he says somebody's got to pay the price and he lands a nice left hook on Hobonesian. Hobonesian was off balance. Marcelo, as you pointed out correctly, he's a star in Peru. He's not a star here. Just another guy. And another guy that tonight, he's going to have to handle a guy coming forward. Use those legs in a consistent manner and find a way to support the movement with offense at the right time. About 20 seconds left here in round one, and we remind you to log on to the Friday Night Fights Facebook page where you can be the judge, round by round scoring. You can see how you compare to Teddy Atlas and follow Nigel Collins at ESPN FNF for all the social media content on Twitter. Round one comes to an end. Doug Kazarian in the studio with a special guest. A little bit, but for now, let's go back out to Bernardo and Teddy in Washington. Thanks a lot, Doug. Obviously, a lot to talk about. Hey, Doug, are you telling us that Todd doesn't have enough time for us? He's big timing us already. He's going to probably be on the Come next on. cover of the body issue. That. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I hope he's covered up very well. <laughs> and here, Marcelo's got to be covered up because Hovanesian. Coming out looking to do some damage here in the second round. Hobanesian works out at the Glendale Boxing Club and his trainer, Edmund Tarvadion, is also the trainer for UFC women's bantamweight champion, Ronda Rousey. So you gotta be tough if you're gonna be fighting there. You gotta be tough if you're Marcelo and you're wearing those short shorts nowadays. <laughs> little Daisy Duke action here. Marcelo trying to land the right, the same shot that his opponent is trying to counter with. Marcelo's a little quicker. Sometimes that can get you in trouble. You reach in a little bit, and a guy like Hovanesian can be there with a counter. That's what Hovanesian's looking for right now, a counter. He's not getting opportunities, so he's, he's waiting a little bit. He's looking for that left hook counter, Hovanesian. And right now, Marcelo's taking advantage of that, just beating him to the punch. Using that speed, but again, got a little reckless there, Marcelo. In reached in there, but didn't pay a price. So 
on the jab there. He looks away, Teddy, and that's not smart against a power puncher like Hovanese. Well, Jersey Joe Walcott used to look away. He used to set you up to great late heavyweight champion from years ago. He'd look away a little bit, but he knew that he had his eye on the ball at all times. He'd make you think that he wasn't there, and then when you came in to take advantage, Jersey Joe, well, he'd deck you. It was a setup. Muhammad Ali stole some of his stuff. And with all due respect, Marcelo is nothing near the skill level of Jersey Joe, but there he connects a nice right. Doesn't seem to be doing too much damage so far. No, as I thought, Marcelo wants to deal with the pressure with movement, using those legs, trying to keep Hovanesian off balance, pick his spots a little bit. Like we said in the graphic for the lead-in to the perform like a champion. He's at the bell. Round one coming to an end with Hovanesian trying to do some work here at the end of the round. And then it gets a little rough as round two is in the books. And tonight's uh, main event. Only maybe not for the local kid. Johnson is here to crash the party. And both Marcelo and Hovanesian. Left hook drops Marcelo. And the referee says it was a slip, but it seemed to be a punch. Yeah, we're going to have to see the replay later on. See if his legs got tangled up a little bit. But if the punch landed, it should be a knockdown. That is the rule. Doesn't matter. As you said, Bernardo, legs could be all over the place, but if the punch lands, guess what? Constitutes a knockdown. That's what's great about a replay. Our people in the truck are getting it ready already. We have the benefit of the replay. Referee Bobby Howard does not have access to it, and that could be a big difference. Well, that's where in boxing's in the dark ages. When, when they have television, they should use whatever technology is available to get things right. Marcelo talked about how that defeat, you can either recover from it by becoming stronger or it can drop you into the darkness. So far, he seems to be smarter in the ring against Hovanesian, but it's only round three of a 10 round lightweight fight. The truck is telling me, and I believe the truck, I believe my men, that yeah, maybe a punch landed, we'll see it, but yes, also the feet got tangled up. Well, Hovanesian's foot stepped on the lead foot of Marcelo. But right now, Marcelo let those quicker hands go. Hovanesian trying to land the biggest shot. And it, Marcelo landed a solid right to the temple that Hovanesian felt, but wasn't able to follow up on it. Seems that Marcelo's got to pay the price to get close to Hovanesian. Only because he's got bad technique in the way that he reaches in. If he didn't reach it, if he would whoop, step in behind the jab, ring those feet, not let the uh, upper body get ahead of him. In other words, up. not hurl himself, then he wouldn't have to pay a price there. Bernardo. Nice jab by Micello, maybe listening to your talk of technique and the technique. The basic technique of boxing is that jab, and when you follow it up with a right cross like Hovanesian did, it works even better. Well, you mentioned earlier that Marcelo is boxing more tonight. He knows he has to box more than he did the last time he put on air where he got stopped in eight rounds by the Russian, the guy. Up. He was boxing that night, too. The only problem is the pressure got to him. It takes time for pressure to get to you. Let's see how he deals as time goes on. Look at the foot now of Hovanesian. He steps on the uh -huh. foot of Marcelo right there. And the punch. Now we're going to get a better look at the punch. Take a look at the punch. Not a clean punch. Sort of a slap, a cuff punch. Didn't really land clean. The foot and the push is what actually scored the knockdown there. Or at least got Marcelo to the canvas. Not really a legitimate knockdown. But guess what? It's in the books. Actually, it didn't count as a knockdown, so Bobby Howard got it right. Oh, exactly. That's what I meant to say. It wasn't a 10 Thank God I got you here. 
So good call there by Bobby Howard, who was able to see the trip before the punch on the neckline. And does a good job there. Didn't need replay after all. No, you didn't need replay. You're right. And Howard, as you said, in position. And that's the key to a good referee. Well, one of the keys anyway, Bernardo. Be in good position. He was in good position. And he saw what we saw eventually with the replay. Calvinian leading from his left nostril. Started last round. Ooh. And a skip in and a hop from Micella trying to land that left hook. And you were talking about that. But what technique. about the jab? What about the jab of Hovanesian? Yeah, he skipped in, he hopped in, Marcelo, but Hovanesian was there to land a nice solid jab as he skipped and hopped his way in. Hovanesian right now is just looking. Break! He's being break. a little patient. Stop, no punch when I say break. And he's Watch waiting head, for Marcelo to make mistakes. Watch your head. He's waiting Never for the right spot. There will be warned now about their heads clashing inside. Both guys have been involved in head clashes in their career. Matter of fact, Hovanesian had a technical draw in a head clash fight where he and the opponent both got cut. Marcelo had a no contest in his last fight when he and his opponent got cut from a head clash. Marcelo's been involved with head clashes and cuts in several fights. And Marcelo said in his last fight, which was a no contest, he got the worst of the cut with uh, the left brow being cut. His opponent got cut in the back of the scalp and it was his opponent who didn't want to continue, knowing that if the fourth round finished, it would go to the scorecard. So well, you can see how Marcelo gets involved in head clashes. You know, he wings himself forward, he hurls himself forward, he's got no control sometimes. And he crashes on the inside. Gets out of, gets off balance. Falls in a little bit. Ooh, that was the attempt by Micello who hops in and okay. almost lands a right, but Hovanesian does make him pay on the counter. You were completely right, Teddy, how he's just stalking him and letting him come to him as round four comes to an end here on Friday Night Fights, coming to you live Box out of it. Box from Shelton, out of it. Don't Washington. Hold guys, guys, come here. And I can't wait to see the setting and the content of tonight's fight play. A lot of people at all waiting to see Box. Keep it clean, man. Uh, Keep it clean this round. Clean. I, I like look men. forward Keep to it. On. Beautiful place to do it on the course there. Um, you will not see Box. any illustrations Don't put down on the head. of my swing. On who head? That on the contrary, Teddy. I that will not will be, be shown. Some, that some, will not be shown. Some golf action with Teddy Atlas. Box. Did you put on the, the knickers and the uh, long socks? And no, I left not? that to my caddy. Oh, you've got a caddy. Oh. They, they told me when you did things, you did them all out. And I, I, I guess we'll have to wait for that fight plan here on Friday Night Fights. As Micella and Hovanesian almost halfway through this fight in round five. Oh, stop, stop. Great. Come on. Your head's going down low and you can't push down. Box. Clean it up, guys. Referee Bobby Howard with ammunition of both guys. One for pulling down and the other for keeping his head down. Either way, it's a bad combination when it comes to headbutts. Marcelo with a nice one, too. He's attacking Ovenetian. Last seven punches unanswered. And here it gets hot. Marcelo has Ovenetian against the ropes, landing a nice left hook. The blood trickling down from Ovenetian once again. Now look, that was terrific for Marcelo. The quicker hands that I talked about, he picks spots. He's a spot guy. You know, he'll fight in flashes. But he did that in his fight that he got knocked out. What happened ultimately was he couldn't handle the pressure coming back. He was given good, but not taking real well. That's still the question tonight. Ovenesian still is on track. Keep that pressure on and see whether or not Marcelo stays there or whether or not he evaporates like a puddle on a hot summer night. And I think we're going to get a two-minute round here, Teddy. Right, right. Okay, exactly clean, what clean. happened. The timekeeper gave very us good. a two-minute round with 55 seconds still remaining in round five. Yeah, you know, that's terrible. That's, that's where the commission 
that's where the commission has to make sure things like that don't happen. Speaking Armenian in Hobonesian's corner. Okay. Do you speak Dom. Armenian? Dom. I do not. I can translate most, but not this one. Only a two minute run. This one I can translate, Teddy. You know, all they're saying is breathe deeply. You know, I tell you, I am upset. Commissions, really, they're there to regulate. Well, done it, regulate. Don't have a timekeeper that's going to cut off a minute. That interferes with the outcome of the fight. I think that helped Marcelo. You know, he flashed already. He scored. He was up on the cards, obviously. But the pressure was coming, as I talked about. That's how Havanesian has to win by pressure. He's not as fast. He's not as flashy. He's not as cute as Marcelo. He's going to have to be steadier and just bring the thunder all night long. And he needs every minute, every second of every round in order to do that. And he just had 60 seconds robbed from him. Marcelo catches the break and see if he can build on it here in round six, the second half of this 10 round bout. Marcelo looking to land that uppercut, good head movement from his opponent, Hovanesian. Yeah, Hovanesian's hurt himself. He's pressing forward, but not effective enough. Not behind the jab. That time a jab, but then he fell in. Didn't keep enough space to work when he gets close. If you're going to press a guy, you're pressing him to get close. When you get close, you must be able to deliver. Let's take a look here at Teddy's scorecard. He's got Micello up, winning the last two rounds as well as that first round. So a one-point lead for Micello. And this is what you, the Facebook fans, have so far. Four to one, overwhelming in that fifth round by 96%, a two-minute round. They like the flash. I get it. And there's some flash there, some speed, quick one, two, and then Marcelo gets out of town. Using his legs to set up his hands right now, Marcelo. And again, doing a decent job of it. He was doing a decent job against Nagaya. But the pressure started to wilt him. Probably right about now. The problem with this fight, Nagaev put the punches with the pressure. Of Venetians putting pressure, but not enough punches. And it seems like he's waiting too long to counter punch or, or get his offense going. And he's allowing that flash that you fans on Facebook allow uh, Micello a 4 1 lead. He just poses, he lets his opponent throw punches, they don't land but there's nothing coming back. Again, you can handle pressure. You know, it's like you can handle a lion coming stop, at you. Stop. Break clean. If he doesn't open his mouth. <laughs> if he just comes at you and he doesn't show his teeth or his claws, well, might scare you a little bit, but you're gonna be okay. Same thing here. We're hoping he's not showing his teeth, not showing his claws enough. Back to full three-minute rounds here on Friday Night Fights as round six comes to a close between Hovanesian and Micello. Stop! Stop! Their 15 pro bouts. Should be a good fight coming up after this fight, which is now in its seventh round between Micello and Hovanesian. I think the difference with, you know, stats to me, sometimes they mean nothing. They're just Break filler. No you know, just to fill something on television, put a graphic up there, you put a darn stat up. <laughs> and in that case, it's all in context. It's all about the relevance of the stats. You know, you just made a good point. You mentioned, you know, they both have 10 knockouts. Yeah, but one guy fought better opposition. Gravonsky's fought nobody. So to me, those knockouts, they're not that Break. relevant. Break. Break. They don't mean as much. Johnson's mean more. He bit, fought guys. a little Go better on. competition. Come it's not that you scored knockouts, to me, tell me who you've been in with, who you accumulated those stats with. That's what matters to me. And right now what matters is the legs and the quickness of Marcelo still keeping 
Hobonijian off balance, enough to grab rounds. Seems Hobonijian, though, is cutting that distance a little bit. And you were talking about, will Marcelo be able to keep this rhythm up for the full 10 rounds? And him wilting against... Nagaya. Nagaya. Exactly. But the problem here is, Hobonijian ain't no Nagaya. <laughs> because he's not throwing the punches. He's bringing the pressure. He's coming forward. But he's not bringing the punches with him. He hasn't put in the work like Nagayev did to break down Micello. That's why Micello can Box still out, use out. that jab as break, break, a shot break. to the Come back on, of the neck there. Clean it up. Come on. Hope he's in another warning. Good referee here. Does a good job. Doesn't intrude, but he keeps control. Good job. Again, bad picture if you wanted Hovanesian to win the fight. Gets inside. And he allows himself Break. to do that. Get smothered, tied up. Marcelo can afford to do that. He makes his living on the outside. Especially tonight. Hovanesian needs to get it done on the inside. He's not. No jab with Hovanesian coming forward. So Marcelo can have fun on the outside. He can pick his spots. He can pot shot. He can grab on the inside. Get away with it. Right now, the pace of the fight... The control of fight, it's all Marcelo. The idea of the fight, all Marcelo. The strategy of the fight, all Marcelo. So basically what you're saying is ring generalship all goes to Jonathan Marcelo so far in the first At the seven rounds. The There's bail. blood on the right side of the face of Marcelo. Not sure if it's a cut or his opponent's blood as round seven comes to an end. Nelson Fernandez was working on, on the round. cut Watch over the head. right of eye Box. of Jonathan no Micello. And in the corner, Teddy, they were telling you're telling him, you're starting to hop. Stop hopping. Exactly my sentiments. And if you hop, well, you might hop right into a punch. That's the problem. You jump in, or as they say it, and you've been saying it, hop. Well, there could be a left hook waiting for you. Gotta be lost in translation, right? Jump, hop, it's all the same. You get the idea. Synonyms. Get <laughs> the idea. Ooh, and so did Ovenesian. Caught him mid-hop and tagged him with the left, but doesn't follow up. You know, I mentioned earlier that both guys have been involved in head clashes. Also, that Marcelo has been cut several times in fights. Usually brought on by head clashes, he's cut again. He's cut in the corner, as you said, of the right eye. He's looking to land. This wings three break. above the head break. of Micello, break. who continues to use his legs. This is the sweet science, Bernardo. And the sweet science would imply you got to be smart. You get inside, you got a guy who's moving, who's ducking and weaving a little bit. It's not smart to throw, as you just said, three punches like that to the head. You go downstairs, the body's not moving. And Hovindis, you need somebody to tell him. And he should have been doing that early, to be quite honest with you. Going to the body, putting some water in the basement of Marcelo, trying to take those legs away from Marcelo. So later in the fight, he could catch up to him. Best way to stop a mover is... Work the body. Or cut the ring down, one or the other. And he's doing neither so far through eight rounds. No, he's not. And he's not present behind the jab. And that he, again, Hovanesian, not present behind the jab. And he's allowing that. Marcelo to fall in with a couple of shots, grab him, kill some time. I think Marcelo's looking to tight time off the clock right now. He feels he's ahead. He doesn't want to get worn down. He's picking his spot, using his legs a little bit. Whatever he can, he do a little grabbing on the inside. And as I said, take a little time off the clock. No champion here. And no coming forward from Ovenesian behind the jab. And that's why Ovenesian, at least on my scorecard, has himself in a big hole. Team, if he's in the big hole in your scorecard, the fans on Facebook have it even wider. If they already had a wide margin. In right hand. Marcella, these two finally exchanging fireworks here as round eight comes to an end. Coming up next, it'll be a great battle.
between Gavroski safety first. This guy fought with the broken jaw and got, got the victory. Yeah, no, it's a testament to his courage. Good round, man. To his heart of a fighter. Fight clean, fight clean. You never know how you're going to behave until you're in that kind of position when you're hurt, when something drastic has happened, and then you pull yourself up by your bootstraps. He did, but again, he did it with a lower level. Hopefully he doesn't get a broken jaw tonight, but he's going to have to handle himself. The point is, with a higher level of competition tonight, I think it's going to be a rough night for him. It's going to be interesting to find out and to see it. Box out of it, box His out opponent it. definitely box comes with skill and pop, so that's our main event coming up immediately after the Micello Hope Edition fight. And uh, he's got about five minutes to do it, but Hope Edition so far hasn't been able to break down Micello and follow the keys that you said would be crucial to victory. One of the things that's helped, helped myself a little bit, the couple of little, little spots where he got tagged, which hasn't been many tonight. His legs have kept him out of trouble, and of course, Hovindian has helped Marcelo by just not letting his hands go enough. But one of the things that may have helped Marcelo, he's the bigger man, never below 134. While Hovindian has recently been at featherweight, 127 pounds. Although tonight he's back up to lightweight, Hovindian 134 and a half. But being a bigger man, naturally for Marcelo, I think has helped him a little bit. He's been quicker, bigger. And he's been able to handle the little bit that's come at him. All right, Teddy, you've given Marcelo the last five rounds for a 78-74 unofficial scorecard. You, the fans, our Facebook viewers, have it six rounds to two in favor of Marcelo as well. So, so far, it's been pretty... Well, that's the picture right there. See that picture? Take a snapshot of that. That's why Hovanesian, well, one of the reasons why Hovanesian is lost in this fight. He gets inside. He needs to work. He said it early. He's not the guy on the outside to win this fight. He's the guy that's got to be close. He gets close. What do you do? Initiates a grab. Accepts a grab. Either way, it's not going to get him into the winner's circle. Nice combination, first the right, then the left hook by Jonathan Micello. He's going for broke here at the end of round nine as Hovindian once again break, break, initiates break. the clinch break, with Micello. Again, Micello likes to fight in spurts, flash, spots. Picking the spots pretty good tonight. Being allowed to pick his spots. Nothing on the outside coming at him. You know, he can float like a butterfly, sting like a bee a little bit. Yeah, part of Micello looking good is the fact that Art Hovindian is not putting up his end of the bargain here as round nine is about to come to an end. So Hovindian will have to do what he hasn't done in the first nine rounds in three minutes. Good job. Yeah. Well, you want to know one of the reasons I talked about why he's losing Hovindian? Well, the pictures don't lie, do they? Gets inside. To me, that looks like Last he's round. very happy uh, him up. Last to round. accept that clinch okay, with Marcelo. Let's go. So Hovindian getting instructions from his corner to come out and be aggressive because if the local judges have it anything close to what you fans have it on our Facebook scoring app, and Teddy Atlas has it unofficially, then it's more than an uphill battle for Hovindian. He needs. Not just a knockdown, but a knockout against Micello, who's dropping his hands at the worst time. Well, he's showing off a little bit. You know, he's feeling cocky now. He wasn't feeling cocky early in the fight, but now he's feeling a little cocky. Showing off a little bit, maybe trying to... He knows that some of this is going to wind up in Peru. Some of these pictures are going to be seen where he is. Very well known, and he wants to show those fans in Peru, I guess, that, hey, I still got that pizzazz, that thing. And the cut continues to open wider, and this is Teddy's scorecard, 88-83, the last six Break. rounds in favor of Micello. Hovindian really needing to do something spectacular here. And Micello said, Teddy, I came to the U.S. because this is where boxing Box out of Box out is at its peak. And if I Break. want to be big, I've got to do it here in the U.S. And the numbers here so far overwhelmingly in favor of Maisalo, who now drops Hovindian, not sure if it was more of a push, much like the way he went down. And that's exactly the way this very solid referee is seeing it too. 
Bobby Howard there, and now a huge cut over the left eye of Art Hovanesian, but it comes late in the fight. Sella looking to target that cut with the right hand. Spitting out blood is Hovanesian. As there's a minute left here in round number 10. Good work by Nelson Fernandez, Marcelo's cut man. His cut did not become an issue. The legs. Stop. The quicker Break. hands. Break, step back. Step back. And the age. Or the lack of age for Marcelo. Two years younger than Hovanesian has been showing all night long. Good job. Box. Ovenesian said he was going to go back to Armenia to see his wife, who he hasn't seen in over a year. Don't spin. And it seems that he will not have good news for her, Teddy, after this performance. No, when you don't use your jab, when you're going to press forward, you don't work when you get inside. And generally, you just don't move your hands enough all night long. Usually, it's going to mean bad news when you make a living fighting. by Micello who wants to finish strong and pretty much has scripted Hovhannisian initiating the clinching as the fight comes to an end a, a hop and a punch from Micello as uh, most people here present and you might imagine should be a victorious night for Micello this is how the action ended here on Friday Night Fights as it was a push that sent Hovhannisian to the canvas. We'll be back with the official decision.